creatives, community, kind folks out there. Thank you for joining me. This is RPG with DBJ. Uh, it's Tips and Tricks Tuesday, and we are going to continue our little open discussion about using the fey, you know, pixies, sprites, fey creatures, uh, those kind of things. So uh, it's Tips and Tricks Tuesday. I thought I would go, I don't know, a little bit into uh, mechanical bits and pieces and some out of game uh, tips and tricks we can use for uh, using fey creatures in our uh, in our gaming sessions. So one one thing, of course, is to look up. Um, just take some time. Go to you know Wikipedia or any number of websites that detail some of the darker um, or even some of the more historical elements of fairy tale stories, uh, because many of them. Are dark. If we just think about some of these stories, especially the ones that are relatively modern, meaning like written in the, when I say modern, written in the 1700s, 1800s, 1900s, um, many of them had extremely dark origins. And uh, for the most part, a lot of them, before they became children's stories, were written as like cautionary tales or something just to um, uh, titillate adults. And then when they were slightly desanitized to children, they were also uh, stories to basically teach children about fears and about the world um, or to <laughs> essentially uh, teach them lessons to keep them from doing certain things until they got old enough to realize why. So a lot of that has to, you know, with with uh, a lot of the fairy tales like Hansel and Gretel and uh, being tricked to go out into the woods because the, the old hag wants to make, put them in an oven and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's pretty, some of these stories can be pretty dark if we just sit back and think about them. But also uh, using fey creatures, uh, it's a great opportunity for you as a, as a uh, master or a dungeon master to blend the, the physical aspects of defeating an enemy with the social aspects and also with uh, a lot of the fake creatures, it's an opportunity to reskin some of those uh, physical elements like traps and, uh, and creatures and uh, challenge the players on a more of a intellectual or even uh, social method to escape some of those uh, th those barriers and such. For example, it's a great opportunity for you for you to use multiple layers of illusions or um, traps like mazes or um, some other kinds of gla glamours when if they're in the wilderness or what have you uh, to navigate themselves, getting lost in a fey wild or dark wood or something of that nature. Maybe if the if the players are far more uh, martially uh, martially focused, or maybe if the martially focused characters are getting a lot more spotlight and attention, this might be a way for the 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 less martially focused characters to to shine. Also, as I mentioned uh, yesterday, and was brought up. You know, uh, fake creatures tend to have a lot of minions around them, uh, so you could absolutely use the minions. To, and, and don't just pick like one minion, like an, like an owlbear or three trolls or something. Like mix them up really, really good and just reskin a lot of those things. So, for example, you could have um, a, a set of very smart pixies or sprites or what have you. And then you could take things like sturges, which are just like, you know, bat winged flying like half bat, half insect things that suck blood or something. And you could just make them fairy creatures and have them, you know, attacking the players along with, you know, giant alligators or anything like that, uh, or hill giants or what have you. Uh, Zevron says, if you know the song under the hall, of the mountain King, you probably do not. Uh, um, you probably do, but aren't familiar with the name. I'm not familiar with the name. Uh, it's about how people work, People would go under the mountains to talk to the daughters of the, and then it cuts off as, as a part one. I don't see what the rest of it says. Um, it, um, it, well, 
because many of us, um, you guys in, in the chat and joining these uh, live streams come from around the world. Okay, here it is. Um, it's about how people would go under the mountains to talk to the daughters of the elf king. They'd be gorgeous and ask you to dance with them, but they never face away from you. They are rotting husks from behind. They'd force you to dance faster and faster until you died. As the Dead Man the Storyteller says, like in Lost Girl, um, not with a question mark. I put the question mark there. Zevron says they'd eat your body. Exactly. So uh, a lot of using the, the fake creatures. And, and by the way, well, uh, someone else um, brought up in the, the comment section of, of the video talked about, you know, really great ideas such as I want to give credit to where credit is due. So let me go ahead and do this. Um, brought up the idea of. You know, there's a number of shows like Lost Girl. Um, it's another show that was out there. Um, I, I'm I'm going to go. I'm going to go get it right now because I want to give. Uh, like I said, I want to give credit where credit is due. There we go. Um, there's a television show called Lost Girl. It was a and I, I remember watching like the first season of that. A woman who is a succubus and must feed on the sexual energy of others to heal herself in a world with hundreds of other fey types. Um, Happy, <laughs> the television show Happy, uh, a blue unicorn with wings follows around a cop, and and they're searching for the girl who's gone missing. Uh, and the 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 unicorn, the uh, the blue unicorn is the imaginary friend of the cop's daughter and she's going missing and he's kind of working with each other. Of course, he's like a hard and gritty cop and the unicorn of course is, is quite, um, quite uh, jovial and silly. And, um, and the movie bright, a human cop and an orc find a magic wand that kills most who touch it in a magical explosion, which is, is kind of his, his, hysterical. Um, we, I, I'm, I'm sure we could all say that bright could have been, had a better execution but excellent world building. So yeah, I love that too. Um, and you know, Zevron says elves and folklore are folk tales are monstrous. Tolkien really changed that with his uh, perfect race. And I, I absolutely agree with you. I mean, elves were supposed to be quite mysterious and, you know, they had different agendas. And so fake creatures in, if we get away from the, if we try to move away from, the um, not the the beauty or the the passivity of them. Um, that's what I, I guess what I mean um, from them being passive and just wanting to be friends to being these monstrous, you know, um, devouring things. You could you can really go really deep with it, especially when it comes to things like uh, a lot of Dungeons and Dragons creatures start out um, come from mythology where they were very enchanting so you could use things like sphinxes and harpies and uh, some some of these really brutal creatures and then just put a a glamour over top of them as being beautiful or wanting you to stay either to charm you or draw you in and then once you once you you know lift the cover uh of of them looking beautiful or charming or um, and what have you, that there's really these these uh, bizarre, nasty things that want to devour you. Or they might even, if you, if you don't want to just make it straight up, let's let's have a fight, they might try to capture you and use you for these fairy, bizarre uh, things, like wanting to cut out your heart or hang you upside down and drain the blood from you for, you know, to feed the... I don't know the fey tree or something like that. Like you could, you could draw this out for like a ritual or a punishment to the the local population, and the PCs just happen to be involved in it or something like that. Especially if it's a thing where they, you know, they trick the children to go away or whatnot. Uh, Zevron says the the comics fable fables I'd say qualifies as a story about fey. I never read that, but I had, I, but it's been around a while. Um, it has fables and fake creatures. It follows the love story of Bigby Wolf, the big bad wolf, and Snow White. Oh, that's kind of cool. I, and you know what? The like the play Wicked, the television show, um, Once Upon a Time, um, the show Grimm. Like they take a lot of those tropes and and throw some twists on them. And what a great way to make like 
like in your world, you could have the big bad wolf, which could be like um like a werewolf, be the hero, and everyone hates him because the um, you know the the so called princess, the Snow White of your story, is really the evil one trying to kill him because he found out what she's doing with uh I don't know with charming the dwarves, and she always has to have seven of them because she likes to eat their seven hearts or something. Like you could go really dark and deep with with it or something like that. Uh, Dead Man, the storyteller, says today's goblin are what old time old times elves were. You're yes, you're absolutely right. The elves. As as Tolkien morphed elves into like this very um, upstanding kind of a uh, royal race, th then we kind of morphed like go gremlins and goblins into what the elves used to be. But there's no there's no reason to to not make elves that way. Maybe on the outside, everyone's like, oh, they're great. And then you find out that, that they're pretty brutal. Or maybe maybe the real, the, the elves of Dungeons and Dragons have a dark past so that they are blood relation to something far more evil and they don't want that to get out. So that could be a thing as well. Um, yeah, um, old time hobgoblins were basically the Harry Potter house elves, as everyone says, yep. Um, Dead Man brings up the movie Hoodwinked. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. Um, Prue, I says, uh, I find Dresden Files very inspiring when it comes to the Fae. Yeah, I love the Dresden Files, and Dresden Files brings that up in a modern setting. So, uh, someone in um in one of the comments says that like like um, Fae creatures in science fiction are like antithetical, which I I do tend to agree, right? Science fiction usually is like the antithesis of magic and mystery. But I think there, even in a modern setting, like like Once Upon a Time, um, it, it was a way for them to twist and form those things in today's setting. I suppose in a science fiction setting, you could have fey creatures from a particular race. Let's say you have an intergalactic society. There could be a race that was brought into the, the, the galactic union or something, and they still have these fairy tale uh, myths but usually what happens in science fiction is that a people think of them as myths and then you find out that there's a scientific reason for it, whether it's like radiation or um, an, an ancient artifact or um, the, the, the psionics of, it, of a, a particular member race or something like that. You know what I mean? It could be uh, poisonous gases or whatever, gravity, solar flares, whatever. Um, Dead Man Story Tales says that's similar to what they did in Once Upon a Time. Little Red Riding Hood was a werewolf. Yeah. And and the the Red Hood kept her from changing, I believe. Or or changing uncontrollably. And that's where the where the Red Hood came from. I think that's that's how they 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 changed that story around. But but how cool is it, right? Especially if you have um one thing that also with fairy tales and fae creatures, you tend to have a number of innocent people and which can really twist the story, especially if you have the player characters in a small town or a village or a place where the PCs call home and the innocent people are the ones being affected by the fae. So it's not just a matter of, oh, they're bad guys, just, let's just kill them. There could be innocent people that are charmed or transforming or shape-shifting or uh, cursed. And it may not be as simple as, you know, the mayor turning into a, a beast, uh, you know, every full moon and the people were like, please don't kill the mayor. Now there are some PCs that could care less. Like they're like, well, it's a creature. I don't care if they're innocent, let's go kill it. But for players that really want to involve themselves in a story or, or their favorite shopkeeper is, is um has been charmed or cursed to do, you know, particular heinous acts, having them solve that mystery and break the charm or glamour that's on them might be um, a part too, especially when it comes to trying to stop a, a Dungeons and Dragons creature without killing it. You know, uh, Prue says also the bloody chamber by Angela Carter, it blew fresh air into the old fairy tales for me. I never heard of that, but yes, check out the bloody chamber by um, Angela Carter. As everyone says in God of War, 
the 2018 version, you have light elves and dark elves. They are bug-like humanoids with dragonfly wings. The light elves look closer to D&D elves, but are covered in white robes and float off the ground. Meanwhile, the dark elves look closer to bugs and weird and weird um, tridents. So you could, I think it, it really behooves you I, to reskin the hell out of a lot of things. Like, for example, I know whether it's fifth edition or any edition of Dungeons and Dragons, they they have different stat blocks for different types of fae. Like sprites are different than pixies, which are different than quicklings, which are different than I don't know, um, gremlins and whatnot. But I, I really think you could you could take something really far by either having some kind of like shape shifting to a particular kind of creature or just describing them in a monstrous way and just picking a stat block that fits, whether it's using Rakshasa or Naga or Hags or um, even an Ooze or something like that. Like having something that's in, you, you, you know, it's um, like from Men in Black, <laughs> the, the, the lady that was married to Egger and is talking about um, the Egger suit. You, you know, her husband gets killed in, in the um, the giant roach is inside of his body, you, inside of the, the, the actor's body, walking around like it's a skin suit. And that could be a thing where you want to use, hey, I want to use swarms of beetles, you know, or swarms of insects. And then just have someone who's walking around the town who's acting odd and then their skin just falls off and they become a swarm of beetles or something. Um, doppelgangers could be the same way, but you could make it bloody where... They literally take take a knife and skin people, and then wear the skins, uh, you know, something like that. Um, very much so. Uh, Tesla Tesla Ranger says, in a manner of speaking, the old version of fairy tales has been replaced with aliens. Hmm. In in both cases, you have creatures who are um, ineffable and don't understand humanity, who randomly abduct humans, play with them, and return them with time loss and occasionally strange powers or afflictions. Periodically, there are tales of those who have dealt with dealt with them and benefited, but for the most part, mundane people are merely their playthings. And what what a great insight! I absolutely I, I can't agree with you more. I didn't, I never really thought about it that way, but you're right. the The whole alien probe, lost time. I mean, how many how many stories have we seen where whether it's uh, things in pop culture, televisions, or movies, or or something, comic books, even where someone has been abducted and then they return 80 years later or 200 years later. Uh, there was an old television show called 4,400 where that happened. And, you know, 4,400 people were abducted by aliens and then they all come back and, and they all happen to have these like psychic gifts or something. And everyone's wondering, are they, you know, a blessing or a curse to humanity? And of course the story is to figure that out. And that could be the basis of, one or most types of magic in the world that you are that people are abducted by these fey creatures and then returned so there could be maybe druids uh and even as a side note like rangers and warlocks that people don't trust and, and you know as a pc of course you have your own character but it could be that they have uh, it's like they're the x-men right they're the ones that have like the, the the, the best parts of it, but there could be people returned that have been afflicted with something that isn't quite right. You know, it's the werewolf curse, you know, Hey, I'm a regular person, but during the full moon, I go crazy and kill people. So the question is, do you kill an innocent person or do you kill the beast and allow the innocent person to die? And what happens then? So yeah, I absolutely, I cannot agree with you more that aliens kind of have replaced our modern day version of aliens has replaced the old timey fairy tales. And you, you know, it's, it's the, it's the, please don't go out in the woods cause this thing might happen to you. Um, it, educational kind of thing. But of course in our world, we can make it real. You know, um, Zevron says a cool little thing also is in the, in the dwarves, they can travel between realms as easily as breathing, but other races can't comprehend what they're seeing. So to them, a dwarf just walks behind a rock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and of course that's the old leprechaun tale, right? Out in the woods and they walk behind something and all of a sudden they disappear, you know, and 
so yes, absolutely. And and dwarves, remember before Tolkien took a hold of them, dwarves were kind of considered fey as well. So we tend to we tend to default to humans being humans being the the most numerous creature that is afflicted by things, right? Like skeletons tend to be humanoid, ghosts tend to be humans and that kind of thing. But who's to say that all fake creatures aren't from descended from dwarves and that they are dwarven ish, like in size and shape and mentality, or that there aren't a number of fake creatures that are um, changed by the race that they deal with. So dwarven fake creatures are earth like, maybe elven fake creatures are more ephemeral and aerial or spiritual. Um, I don't know, gnomish fake creatures are like more mischievous maybe or something like that. Um, halfling fake creatures are the tiny ones. You, you're tr related to the tiny ones, maybe something like that. Um, Zevron says, or wall and teleports out of existence or behind them. And now, now I don't recommend you turning all your dwarf PCs into nightcrawlers, but it is a cool thought though. Yeah, well, that's not necessarily true. Um, RP Gamer says the, the crazy farmer with his abduction story. Yeah, exactly, right? It's like no, either no one believes him or the farmer doesn't know what he's talking about because there's this like weird abduction. So uh, I absolutely agree that like you can really, it, really take those fairy tales and, and twist and turn them. Um, I'm going to go into some other like tips and tricks we can we can give people as well. Um, Zevron continues to say the reason um, the most things afflict humans is because they got <laughs> got to fuck with everything literally and figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, how how much how many times is this, do we have to pick and poke and prod things that we shouldn't? I mean, hell, how how much how many foods side note, I'm going to squirrel on this one. There's like, like a um very expensive uh, butt weasel coffee. It's basically coffee beans that are harvested from the feces of like these tree weasels. As human beings, like who thought to to make that in the coffee, like somebody had to be the first to brew those beans out of that the, the dookie. And then for other people to go, hmm, that doesn't taste too bad. I think I'm going to reach into the dookie. You know, the, the, the <laughs> I don't know. It's, people are strange, man. Fat Ninja, yeah, see, he's got a couple of, what is it, like Blue Mountain coffee or something like that. It's like here in the States, it's like $400, $400 a pound or something. Yep, reaching in and getting those beans out of that. That um doo doo. Anyway, Foolish Kiwi says aliens are like fairies for atheist ag agnostics in a way. When you word it that way, not a jab. The comparison is just interesting, though. Yeah, I, I actually absolutely agree. And maybe it's a it's like our because people tend to uh, not associate with magic in modern day. Maybe it's our it's a, again our cautionary tale of aliens. You know, like. Hey, we can go out into the space and develop into science and uncover things, but better watch out because aliens might and then fill in the blank of what they might do to us. Yeah, uh, Dead Man the Storyteller says Woodland. Yeah, uh, we tend we we love our our fake creatures in the woodland areas. Uh, Proust says I always love the stories of areas where people and animals lose time or get tired, fall asleep, and maybe never wake up. Um, sulfuric lakes always feel creepy, creepy fate to me. Um, <laughs> a foolish cube says quick paint the space shuttle red it'll make us invisible <laughs> that would be weird but it, but it would be kind of cooler to to literally take the 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 fairy tales and put them into space that'd be awesome but fruits kind of makes up a uh brings up a thing about stories about losing time or getting tired falling asleep and here's here's what i mean about uh, shifting and challenging players in different ways. So, for example, you could have, let's say they they have to travel through a forest, and um, I'm bringing this up from a book that that series that I've read with C.S. Friedman, the Cold Fire trilogy. Anyway, the players have to travel. Players, the main characters have to travel through this woods, and the woods to have nothing but these dead forests of like bone bony trees with no leaves on them and they're just like bone white and they have to travel through this forest and everyone fears the forest and they're just like they look around and there's there's no predators in there or nothing they don't see anything except these bone white trees so as they're going along they're going along there's many miles they have to travel and 
they start getting tired, more tired than they realize. You know, they're like, well, I mean, I could probably walk another four or five miles, but man, my legs are starting to starting to get to me. And I'm just starting to yawn and oh boy. So let me sit down. So they sit down and sit against the trees and they they get out their foodstuffs, but they start nodding off very, very quickly, coming to realize that when they take a look at the roots of the trees, the roots of the trees are growing out of the the um rib cages of those that have fallen asleep magically. And when they fall asleep, they just die and they're and their uh desiccating bodies, their decomposing bodies feed into the ground and they grow these uh bone-like trees. So they panic and they realize that in order to get through the woods, they have to remain awake. What a great trap that would be, right? For you go into the woods and if you fall asleep, you you're basically going to uh, like maybe have roots reach up and like drain drain your body of its blood or its life essence so you have to stay awake but if you stay awake you're going to gain levels of say exhaustion or or what have you or you have to spend spell spell slots to use your magic to resist the the pull of of magic in this area or you'll suffer from a sleep spell every 10 minutes or something. And if you get into a fight, you know, the creatures just, instead of them attacking you, they just like crowd around you and they just pick with you and start yelling at you or something using like um, hurtling barbs or insults or, or even charms or something at you just to get you to fall asleep and, and uh, be in, in, in source or something. Uh, Zebron says you could easily make magic or other races come from the Feywild in your game. Perhaps a nearby forest is a direct portal to the Feywild and new races travel from and from and to there. I agree. I agree with that. Um, dwarves and elves and other races may be in, um, immigrated to our world and after centuries have acclimated to the mortal realm while their cousins that live with the Fae still have their, 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 I'll say true magical qualities. Um, or maybe magic was taught to people from the Fae. Sorcerers are more prevalent because of the crossbreeding from the Fae races. And I, I cannot agree with that more. And there could be kind of a, like a guilt or a secret or like, like let's say there's uh, dwarves and then there's like the Surf Neblin race and then maybe even something even more insidious and the dwarves kind of feel like um a drawn to the mortal realm but it's also drawn back to their past and they're not sure where like culturally they're not sure where they should sit so and then of course depending on what they are if, if elves elves are more aerial and dwarves are more um earth-like and maybe half orcs are more fiery you know, related to the elements, maybe there's a, an actual relationship between between them where they could actually have conversations and, um, you know, deep uh, deals like, you know, I don't know, the, the fey dwarves are like, you know, you, you're our cousins, you belong to us, don't, you know, don't make treaties with the humans, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Proust says, yes, that's where you want to be an, an elf or have or have some with you. Yeah, um, absolutely. And Again, through crossbreeding and uh, that sort of thing, maybe there are nobles who want to crossbreed with these more insidious fey creatures, and maybe the population knows that they they have these strange rituals or behaviors in their in their castle because every window has hanging from it a small crystal or something, or um, red is painted above the door or something like that that represents some kind of a uh, strange fey. Fey ritual or bane or something like that. Um, uh, Proust says yes, at least in D and D. Deadman, the storyteller, says read a book. Uh, read a book once where the character walked um, onto a field of grass that was razor sharp and cut up her feet. Yeah, you you can really. I think it would be really great to to reskin like your your traps. Um, they could be things that are like, for example, imagine. Um, imagine a, a fey woodland area that draws out your greatest fears. So there's a possible, people have a fear of, of heights or falling. So it could be that instead of just a physical pit trap, it could be that the fear, if a PC has a fear of falling or heights, it could be that they 
fail and all of a sudden they turn the corner of a tree and they're standing over top of a of this long pit you know what i mean they're like fingertips or their, their the tips of their toes i'm sorry are teetering on the edge of this long pit and they fall into it because it was brought about by their own fears whereas maybe someone else is afraid of snakes so snakes come out of the woods maybe someone else is afraid of spiders um uh, that kind of thing maybe someone else is afraid of public speaking so they're affected by like a whole person spell or something so everyone to see every the, their allies cannot fight the creatures that are in front of them but the one who has the fear can fight them so maybe the fighter who has a fear of spiders is like swinging his sword wildly at nothing except to the fighter it's a real thing like you can see them getting cut or maybe poisoned or something that would be kind of different too um <laughs> a foolish kiwi says uh says halflings are ice because they're chill as hell like yeah it's like well you guys go ahead i'm gonna just chill back here <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Prue, Prue says um, crossbreeding could be a brilliant long-term scheme for a fey power. Um, I, I absolutely agree with that. You know, the 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 crossbreeding, the we mentioned before, the stealing of children, replacing a stealing a human child and replacing it with a fey child, because you know that's I mean it's what they do, right? Um, why are children being stolen? Because fey, <laughs> you know, and the the humans some of them may or may not be panicked about this when their daughter is stolen and this other daughter that looks kind of like the original daughter is replaced maybe they want something like that and this has been a dark pact that they've they've made with the fae and then this person grows up maybe as one of the player characters and the player character is a fae creature in the mortal realm but their human so-called twin has been living with the Fae this long time, and and now they're like uh, the Fae, or they're like their warlock patron or whatever, and they're upset that their their true parents left them with the Fae, which could be kind of weird, but kind of cool too. Zevron says maybe wild magic sorcerers are just Fae touch people. True, are uh, born through elves or too close to the portals. Wild magic surges are presented through the bright br bright vivid colors or fireworks or f or um firefly lights uh exactly i mean i mean how what a great way to explain wild magic like to the fey to the fey wild magic surges aren't wild to them it's just part of the background of the fey wild so you maybe you could have an area where if anyone chooses to cast a spell it causes a fey wild surge that the Fae are completely used to, but human beings are just like, what the hell's going on? Every time they start casting spells or maybe uh, the the magic that human beings start to use near these portals that causes, causes these Fae surges starts increasing. Like for example, let's say um, you roll a D10 and for every level of spell someone, someone casts, if you roll that level or below, a, uh, a surge happens. So if someone casts a first level spell, if you roll a one on a D10, something happens. But then somebody casts a fireball, it's like a third level spell, right? So now one plus the third level spell is a four. So if you roll a four or less, something happens, right? And it could be keep charging it up. That'd be kind of a little, but a cool little um, like house rule or maybe house rule in this particular region, right? Um, Prue, uh, Prue says, uh, <laughs> halflings, I've been playing uh, I've been playing since forever, and I only just learned that halflings are smaller than gnomes in d and I'm shocked to the core of my very being. <laughs> I blame the fate for this confusion. <laughs> I See, I always knew halflings were, like, really small. Because I always, uh, I just remember, like, an old photograph, not photograph. Um, someone drew an old picture, and the halflings were literally, like, like at the waist level of a human being who had to bend down and talk to them. Uh, and always was confused like how does a halfling have like a 17 strength and then i realized like monkeys and marsupials and bonobos are pretty pretty damn strong so i kind of classify them on that level um zevron says it's it's not wild obviously it wanted to wanted to cast fireball on myself i need to <laughs> read this letter i need a light why are you all running guys <laughs> yeah yeah of course i wanted to cast a fireball Oh, right, exactly. Like, I mean, it. I know it's it sounds kind of a, a little bit foolish, but 
that could just be a normal thing for them. You know, random fireballs and turning into a goat and like gemstones falling out of the sky. Like, um, what is it? The, the, the other thing, like the wand of wonder effects happening and stuff. Yeah, of course, of course the old, it's it's that way. So yeah, Zevron, I absolutely agree with you, man. <laughs> Foolish Kiwi says there's there's also, of course, the old version of Wild Mage. Every time you cast a spell, you roll um, you know, percentile D100 on your heal um D100, your heal spell comes up with butterflies, <laughs> could swap your gender, cause a mini tornado. Yeah, um <laughs> yeah. But but what a great way to kind of like insert those rules when other players that aren't wild mages come into that region which could be a reason why like um the the, the story of the 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 ancient wizard that has gone off to travel to this area has never returned because maybe they were arrogant and then blew themselves up with a fireball and the the fake creatures were like oh we wanted to talk to him hmm. so now the the player characters come along and this this could be a complication, right? Sure, you can keep blasting things with your Eldritch Blast or something, but maybe you have to outthink what's going on because of a fear of some com some kinds of wild or strange things happening when one of the PCs shrinks down to the you know six inches and another PC's familiar grows to the size of a dragon and, and like, you know, again, a fireball shoots out or someone, you know, a mini tornado is summoned or fog is, surrounds everyone, that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, RP gamers says maybe the children going missing turns out to be a creature who doesn't understand human emotions, just simply having fun. And that, that we did talk about that yesterday, that fey motivations don't necessarily have to be, uh, insidious or evil from their point of view it could be them just having fun like they they look at human beings human children and maybe they just don't understand the difference between a six-month-old and a 50-year-old right to them they like i said oh you, all you guys look the same we just wanted to invite you to a party and being invited to the fey parties you know the the satyrs the 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 ones that live out in the 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 wilderness and they, they, you know, they're playing their, their grand music and are having these great parties um, could be the side effects of other things like their charm person spell or their hold person spell might not be just you paralyzed, but it could be you just laughing and having fun. Uh, what's, what's the other, other spell um, that's real common um, vicious mockery, right? You you could easily reskin vicious mockery into any other type of of thing. Maybe you fall down laughing, or someone tells you a joke, and 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 you're just like like whoa, that just blew my mind, man. You know, something like that. Uh, Prue says a serial killer could easily be Fay or or messed with messed with by uh messed by the Fay. Yeah, exactly. Like someone could be motivated to do something, or for example the the trope of the human being who sees evil in people and it could be an illusion or something placed in their mind so they start killing their innocent family because they think that they're possessed by by demons or or uh, something like that so it could be a fake creature having fun with people like oh i'd like to see what happens and puts these illusions in people's heads and they start having fun i think there was even uh going off on a side tangent here, there was a uh, an episode of the animated the the Batman animated show where the Scarecrow was using a chemical to make people not have any fears any longer, and so people were doing the most dangerous, wild things because they no longer had any fear. So the Fey creatures could say, "Hey, you know, everyone's always scared in this village." What if I put something in their food or or gave them barrels of ale that made them fearless? And so you have people like running headlong into dragon fire and, you know, taking di head dives off of like the rooftops of homes and diving in the frigid water, thinking that they can swim 500 miles and stuff like that. It could be pretty wild and strange. RP Gamer says, uh, says, uh, 
Yeah, says says the Prue, and I agree with you. It's like maybe the serial killer is killing people who he sees as fake creatures in disguise. Yep, absolutely. You know, someone that's like, it's a there's a doppelganger around here. You're all possessed, or you're all fake creatures, and it, and and so a fake creature could be making other people look like fake creatures. Um, Prue says, I love the story of not eating or drinking the food when when in Fay because dangers come with that. Um, but maybe there was even. Maybe they were even right about it in the beginning, but now have become confused by the stress and paranoia of killing. Uh, absolutely. If you, you know, you trick, you trick someone once or twice and they kill someone, a loved one, and, and now they're starting to go crazy, starting to go insane. And the fake creatures are just like, they aren't having fun. I don't understand. I'm trying to help them. You know what I mean? Um, uh, RP Gamer uh, says, like the background to the Hercules TV series, he was made to believe his family were demons. Yeah, that was, I think that was one of the stories in Hercules where Hercules was tricked into thinking his family were demons and he kills them in the uh, the original mythology of Hercules. So I, I believe that really was a thing. Um uh, did, did you see my magic items comment? No. Uh, the chat moves. Oh, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Sorry about that, man. Um, Z uh, Zevron says maybe when the Fey uh, offer rewards to PCs, they don't give gold or gems or insanely powerful objects. Perhaps they give a wand of smiles, because <laughs> the greatest reward for them is giving another a smile. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I, I love I love stuff like that because it could very well like that could be. I like that, Zeron. That could be a, a an ancient artifact for them, because in their world, a a a smile given without um, without a cost could be could be their greatest treasure. And w w how funny would it be for the PCs to like <laughs> to, to go on an adventure to go after this ancient artifact? Maybe maybe the ancient artifact wants to be hunted after by that powerful wizard that's never returned. You know, by human standards, right? Like I heard about this ancient artifact in in the the realm of the Fey. Let's go to the Fey Wild and, and retrieve this thing. And you know, the Fey the the Fey creatures are assembling armies to protect it and no one's ever seen this ancient artifact and they go and grab the wand thinking that it could alter reality and the fake creatures are like please it's supposed to be here it's our lifeblood and it's a, it's a wand of smiles <laughs> oh no although remember there's a chance that it could become a wand of frowns as well hmm which could change the course of uh of history when the factions start arguing, when the the wand turns into a, to a wand of uh, frowns, <laughs> uh, dead man the storyteller says Ga Gygax had a couple of dozen magic items like that. Yeah, in the old days, the, the stupid um, uh, uh, helm of alignment change, girdle of uh, girdle of um, sex change. Yeah, they had a bunch of things like that. Uh, <laughs> but 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 what if those cursed items? are not cursed to fey creatures because it doesn't bother them. You know, having your alignment changed to its opposite by wearing this helmet or a tiara or whatever, putting on a ring that does something, right? Uh, slippers, uh, what is the slippers of dancing that make you dance and you can never stop, right? That might not be wild to them, you know? Putting on these slippers and dancing for 75 years till somebody tries to come along and take it off of them, maybe the the, the fake creatures are just like, wow, I had 75 years of the of the time of my life, and but the human beings, it's like, no, <laughs> you know. Uh, and of course, how stupid is it to like make a girdle of sex change in like a cursed item? I mean, at the time that was a thing. Today, it's just like that's so stupid. Um, uh, Zevron says, also, why why must it always be a fey wild? Maybe it's a fey tundra or fey desert. Uh, seeing elves with foxtails and thick, beautiful fur coats. You are absolutely right. We always consider it to be like the fey wild with, 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 you know, half woodland, a little sprinkle of jungle and swamp in there, but basically like overgrown foliage, ba ba extremely emerald, green, um, uh, that kind of thing, but it doesn't necessarily need to be that way. And I absolutely agree. Fey tundra, fey deserts, fey mountains. Like, why not have uh, 
you know, you know, let it go, let it go, you know, with, with fake creatures forming things out of the snow and ice and, you know, beautiful uh, uh, dryads, I don't know, disappearing in, into the, into the mists as they uh, blend in with the snow instead of blending into a tree or something like that, or forming elemental creatures of ice and snow that um, do their bidding, uh, you know, maybe being surrounded by winter wolves or something like that. That'll be, that would be sweet. And even in the desert, right? You, they could befriend scorpions and um, trapdoor spiders and sidewinder um, things. Maybe there, there are, friends with Naga that are um, diamondback snakes with the, the the heads of fey creatures or elves or something like that. Yeah, um, Zymok uh, says it uh, makes for some interesting mirages using a desert, which which makes a lot of sense too, right? The, the, the mirages that maybe you, the mirage really is an illusion or you step into this fey realm, which could be an oasis that randomly appears in the desert. And so the, the, the the humanity that goes out into the desert is suffering, so they need to drink something. But the the fey creatures control where and when people can stumble upon the oasis, which of course has all the water and the food and and the shelter. You know, the sitting under the the palm fronds so you can protect yourself from the blazing sun. But you might not want to stay there too long, right? Um, or maybe you find it and can't find your way out. Or if you find it and leave, you can't find your way back to it. Uh, Zevron says, maybe they give you a plus two sword and it's chiseled from an ice block and enchanted by the Lord of the Manor. Ooh, ooh, I like that. Ooh, yeah, Foolish Kiwis, I, I, I like that with the, with, like you can make magic items made out of the, what's in that realm so that they go away when you leave. So maybe like in the woodland area, they have, um, it, a, a major magic item might be, be just a broken tree branch, but in in the desert, the magic item might be a glass sword. That would be kind of sweet, like a, a a glass sword or something like that. That'd be um, or in a tundra, it's it's a, a blade made out of ice or a wand made out of ice. And if you leave there and go to some place warm, it starts to melt away. That's um, uh, the, yeah, I, I saw that Zevron, the Lord of the Manor. I. I got it. <laughs> yeah. Spell checking fingers. I get it. Full Q says, oh, maybe there's a red desert Mars style where the Fae literally cannot go. It's like hell for them stepping foot. And it's the only safe place for humans, but they cannot grow food there. Food. There is no river. So they have to venture back into the forest to gain supplies. That's that's a possibility. Like um, it could be that the human they need humanity to gain resources for them. And those resources might be strange to us, but it's perfectly acceptable for them. Whether it's like um, uh, playing cards and dice for games or something like that. Like th their lifeblood might not be food and water or magic items. Their lifeblood might be entertainment. So you have to bring back with them grand tales and, and tell them stories and play games with them. Uh, and if they're not told those games, some kind of curse or they start to transform into evil monstrous creatures or to keep those creatures at bay almost like where the wild things go as long as you're you're in entertaining them they're perfectly fine you know giving them a tummy giving the big monster a tummy rub is cool but the minute they're not in entertained anymore they go in like a, a bloody rampage uh <laughs> yeah. oh man um proust says uh, huh maybe it's a language thing but i never equaled the fey with forest just wildlands so places outside civilization where people get lost and you warn your 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 children from yeah warning them, them away basically and that's that's exactly where a lot of those stories came came from right if you wander off this dark thing might happen to you but in a fantasy realm that might be a true thing so when humanity ex expands out into the wild it could be incremental so they can't you know they can't travel 300 miles because if they go into where the Fey live, the uncharted regions, that's where they control it. So humanity has to move out little bits at a time. So if you're on the edge of civilization, um, 
leaving cookies and milk out overnight, you know, once uh, every Tuesday may be the way that you keep the fake creatures away from stealing away your children or, or your livestock or something. Uh, RP Gamer says, or DBJ, because they like to mess with you, uh, the reward they give appears to be a mighty sword while you're in their domain, but as soon as you come back to Material Realm, it's just a stick of candy. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of cool. I I like that. I, I like that a lot. That that could be where children come up with these really wild stories of them being these these great heroes, and the and the parents are just like shrugging it off, like oh, it's just kids playing out in the woods. They're making they're playing make believe. But when the PCs are scratching their heads, like there's something about this. They go out there and they actually do go into these grand fantastical realms only to come back with candy <laughs> that would be sweet um Prue says in northern europe fey was usually associated with bodies of water or dark forests but i always assumed that it would be wild dangerous areas in general or the other way around rp what what the fuck am i supposed to use a candy cane for <laughs> it leaves the fey wild like oh okay then <laughs> Yeah, one of the one of the um the PCs are like they're getting their weapons, and a kid comes up and gives them a candy cane. It's like you better take the candy. And the PCs are like, I don't need that, and they go off and realize like I left my plus five flaming holy avenger. That's what that candy cane was. <laughs> I I wouldn't do that. That'd be harsh, but it but it would be fun. Yeah, RP Gamer says, yeah, that would be a great reveal to the players. Yeah, and Prue says, either way, it's kind of amazing. Imagine, imagine a player who eats it before leaving. Oops. <laughs> Make a save. Why? Because the because the blade, the, the weapon you just ate is going to explode in your stomach. No, oh man. But yeah, the 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 idea of having these other realms and mixing it with the 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 innocence that the Fae can bring, mixing that with the dangers of it, I think is really something you could have a lot of fun with, especially if you uh, absolutely reskin a lot of those creatures, maybe making them like making trolls, like almost like gentlemen and, and gentle women. Like they, 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 it's nothing for them to have little conversations. Uh, uh, remember in the Hobbit uh, movie and books, the Hobbits were captured by trolls and put on a spit to be cooked and they tricked the trolls into staying awake before the sun came up. So if you want to use very extremely powerful fey creatures with your PCs, maybe there's a way for them to defeat them by tricking them to do certain things like, like um, uh, maybe they have limitations that the PCs can discover rather than just having, I kill it and it tries to kill me. Maybe, sprinkling salt in a circle prevents their magic from penetrating it right or um again if if they stay awake during sunlight or seeing their own reflection or handing them a pear uh makes you immune to their glamours for 24 hours or something right or allows you to pass into the fey realm unhindered but after 24 hours you owe them yet another piece of candy or something like something strange like that you could have some fun with some of the the tropes and mysteries of the Fey, that to human beings just sounds kind of bizarre, but to them makes perfect sense, right? Um, you, you know, it's the it's the it, it, it's the uh, I'm going to pass by the 37, I don't know, uh, blood hungry trolls because I give to them a single copper coin. Um, you know, given to me by a small child from the Fey, and you give them the small copper coin, and all the trolls are like really amazed by this came from little Billy, and they're just like really cool. They're like, "Thanks, guy. You know, that's great. Go ahead, you can go along and whatever." And they're just all like staring at it and, uh, and amazed, like, "Wow, you know who this came from? This came from Billy." You know, the trolls are like, "Really?" <laughs> you know, that'd be that it'd be kind of sweet and bizarre, but you. you I think you could have some fun with it, um, especially if you want to really change something that's super dark and grim. Um, <laughs> Prue says that might teach them not to eat in the Feywild, which I'm sure definitely teach them. Um, uh, RP Gamers is actually one way one way around would be funny too. The Fey come along munching on a sword. <laughs> you know, okay, um, we're almost getting to the hour mark. So imagine this. 
imagine a realm uh, and now follow me on this imagine a realm where illusion to the fey is real and so yeah yeah it's absolutely hilarious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. tastes pretty good but imagine a realm like this where if the pcs believe the illusion right they fail their saves or they actually believe the illusion then the illusion is real. So imagine a bridge spanning 300 feet, right? It, it falls down into a deep crevice, but if they walk on the bridge and they think it's real, the PC that believes it is real. And for the fake creatures, they both can believe and disbelieve their own illusions. So they're walking on this physical bridge, but the PC who disbelieves it falls through it and cannot walk on the same bridge. So yeah, um, RP Gamer says, um, uh, to be honest, that would be a cool campaign to run for kids. They run out to the forest with their bags of candy, get transported to the Fey, and now they have a bag of weapons. That's true. And maybe maybe it could be a resource. So giving of the candy could placate some of the people they meet, but using the candy as a weapon could help them defeat certain evil things. So for a kid, the choice could be, do I keep the candy for myself or do I give the candy away? And what a great moral um, moral way to, um, to, to challenge that moral code, right? With, without there being a really, um, without there being a, a complete yes or no, right or wrong. Uh, Prue says, uh, yes, start them on a Halloween walk to gather candy and then take them to the Feywild. I love RP. I'd run that for my nephew. Um, what is, what's the game? Uh, no Thank You Evil? That, <laughs> we, 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 we did go from um, uh, Grimdark to, to something more, uh, more passive and more for kids. But I still think that's it, what a great story you could run with that, where you, you, the giving of resource management could be a lesson to try to teach the children. Um, and as, as, you know, being nice and to people versus um, selfishness or the cost of what it means to befriend someone um, or to save other people or something like that, it would be kind of cool. So RP gave them, so, so in that case, would it be a benefit for them to fail their saving throw against illusions? My, my question, my answer to that would be yes. Maybe the illusion of a door, failing the illusion would allow you to open the door, walk into the other room and close the door. But if you make your save, the illusionary door doesn't exist and it could be a blank wall. But imagine walking through the door, get to the other side and you're like, oh, it really is an illusion, isn't it? And you can't get back through the other side. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that adjudicating that could get a little complicated, but, but how, great, how great would that be? <laughs> oh, Foolish Kiku says, don't forget to treat that like button. <laughs> yeah. And remember, we, 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 thank you very much for that, uh, for, for that Kiwi. Um, but remember in trick or treat, it's trick or treat, right? So maybe someone wants a trick. So to defeat the monsters, maybe, advantage <laughs> of <Diva. laughs> So maybe to defeat the monsters, the PCs have to perform a trick. Right. So it could be performance using performance or telling a great story or calling up some historical facts and telling and explaining it to them. So you could have a first level adventure where all the creatures are super powerful. Right. There's no way these first level characters could defeat them one on one unless they gain some allies. And maybe to gain those allies, they have to tell them stories and use those so-called um unused skills using the medicine skill to remove that thumb that um um thorn that's in the paw of a powerful sphinx like fey creature right um using the performance skill to juggle or dance or tell poetry or sing um using an acrobatics skill to to balance on one hand you know Things like that. So you could have those kind of things. Yeah. Um, RP Gamer says, um, are we just writing the tabletop version of Costume Quest? <laughs> yeah. So guys, 
Thank you very much. We've hit the hour mark. Um, thank you for joining me tomorrow and the rest of the week. We will continue our uh, Demi Daily Deep Dive into the Fae. Um, <laughs> yeah. And um, we, we will go on into um, deeper dives into it. Uh, something just made me think about um, PCs cosplaying. Like as long as they put like a fake mustache on or a, a cape or the 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 super macho fighter has to wear like a dress or something that the fake creatures just assume that they're in that they're like a small little innocent kids or something, right? But uh, Dead Man Storyteller says check out, check with the guys at Penny Arcade. They already have a campaign setting in a forest camp. All right, but guys, have a good one. Proof says, uh, have a nice day. Thank you, Fat Ninja. Good good to, to have you joining us. Everyone have a great day. Oh, by the way, um, I will, will be doing an additional two-hour uh, deep dive into the Invisible Sun RPG as a review. So that'll be Sunday at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, but that'll pop up as well. Guys, have a great one. I'll see you. Bye.